It's the lifestyles of some of the suspects that has taken this case in an entirely new direction. Since I was like 12, with every fiber of my being, basically everything, I know this is going to be crazy, but I believe that I'm a vampire, part, a part of a vampire and part of a were werewolf. Pisty admits she was at co-defendant Tammy Morris's house when Hendershot was murdered, but says she was watching Morris's two children. Morris was also charged with accessory to murder. I was a babysitter. Can't really say much about it, but I was a babysitter. She denies drinking Hendershot's blood after the murder, but claims she has drank the blood of her fiancé and co-defendant, 25-year-old William Chase. So you would drink William's blood? I have before, yes. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So this week I dug this case up from the back catalog of my brain because I think it's just something I wanted to forget even existed. But I think it's interesting enough to share with you guys. Uh, we're going to cover a case that happened in my hometown while I was living there. It's in regards to the death of 16 year old Jacob Hendershot. I'm not sure how many of you have actually heard this case, but if you can't tell from that opening, it's a doozy. So what are we waiting for? Sit back, relax, and let's dive in. Jacob Hendershot was a 16-year-old boy from Indiana. His mother was young when she had him and only wanted the best life for Jacob, so she asked her parents to take him, which they gladly did. His family described him as fun and loved being around people. Jacob was also a devoted Christian, even attending mission trips to help those less fortunate. During the summer of 2011, Jacob decided he wanted to get to know his biological mother, Nancy Robinson, more. So in July of 2011, his parents sent him off to Panama City, Florida, more specifically the little town of Parker, where he was to spend the remainder of the summer with Nancy. This was their first extended visit for the pair, and they both were excited. He was only there for a few days before he would meet an eccentric young woman. 18-year-old Stephanie Pisty was unlike most girls he had been acquainted with. She portrayed a gothic persona and seemed to have a love for the darker side of life. She and Jacob quickly formed a relationship. Stephanie lived on the same road as Nancy in the home of Tammy and Joel Millsap. She was their live-in babysitter. It wasn't long before Jacob and Stephanie began spending every waking moment together, and it was an even shorter time before she introduced him to her other friends. Joel Millsap, aka Crow, Tammy Morris, Chase Williams, and James Gay. As previously stated, Stephanie lived with Tammy and Joel. Her and William were previously together, which ended when she met Jacob, or so she claimed. Jacob and Joel formed a bond over music, which they often played together, with William sometimes joining the duo. Jacob's mother didn't approve of Stephanie and made her son aware of her concerns. This didn't halt the affair, though, with Jacob spending increasing amounts at the Millsap residence. But this fast-paced romance came to a screeching halt. Stephanie was very, very different. She not only claimed to practice Satanism, but also claimed she was a half-vampire, half-werewolf hybrid. She believed she had special powers to summon demons. This strange lifestyle extended into her relationship with William. He joined her in vampiric rituals which ended with her often drinking his blood and engaging in violent relations. She invited Joel and Tammy as well, who regularly engaged in her dark debauchery. And she decided it was time for Jacob to join the party. Jacob was invited to the home with the notion of spending the evening with Stephanie, but he walked into something completely unexpected. 
He was welcomed by Stephanie, Joel, and Tammy, who had prepared the room for their ritual. She admitted to Jacob she was into Satanism and she was a vampire, and she wanted him to join her and her friends. Jacob, of course, wanted nothing to do with this. It went against everything he stood for. So he told Stephanie he wanted nothing more to do with her and left the home. The fling was short-lived, and she returned to William, who apparently proposed to her sometime after. Jacob left his mother's home on the night of July 14, 2011, and promised to be back before midnight. Jacob never came home that night. Nancy went to the police and filed a missing persons report. Police initially thought Jacob was a runaway because he wasn't from Panama City. The city was searched for four weeks with helicopters and other resources, but nothing came from this. Nancy checked with Stephanie several times, who always stated she had no clue and continuously asked Nancy if she had heard from Jacob or saw him herself. During this time, Nancy also claimed Stephanie had consistently taunted her in regards to Jacob. Nancy thought this was odd and turned to the police to provide Stephanie and her friends as a potential lead. Of course, when Stephanie, Joel, and Tammy were interviewed, they hadn't heard or seen Jacob. They stated the last time they saw him was the night he and Stephanie broke up. But a parent not involved in the situation stumbled upon a troubling post from Stephanie Pisty's Facebook and alerted authorities. This gave another reason to bring all three of them back in for questioning. First, they started with Joel Millsap. Police felt Joel could be convinced to supply the truth due to his gentle demeanor and because he had children. This approach worked, but he denied any involvement in Jacob's disappearance and stated he was present when the event happened. Apparently, after Stephanie and Jacob broke up, she told Joel, Tammy, and William that Jacob had sexually assaulted her. However, police had found no evidence that an assault had taken place. But regardless, Stephanie and her friends hatched a plan to teach Jacob a lesson. On July 14th, Tammy, Joel, Stephanie, William, and James were all at the Millsap resident when Joel invited Jacob to his house. He stated they were ready to denounce their dark rituals and wanted his guidance on it. Jacob came over to the home prepared to help his friends when he was attacked. James had wrapped a chain around his fist and struck Jacob in the cheek under his right eye, fracturing his skull. Jacob was then brutally beaten by James and William, with Joel stating he kicked him maybe once. William tried to slit his throat, and when it didn't work, he proceeded to strangle him to death. The two then drugged Jacob's body to a cement enclosure adjacent from the residence. They chose to strip his clothing and leave him in the cement pipe where he lay for a month. Joel further told police he and William stole a boat and took his clothes and their clothes and threw them in the bay. Meanwhile, back at the house, Joel claims Stephanie and Tammy began to clean up the mess that the assault left behind. William was then questioned, and he corroborated Joel's story. He confirmed the sexual assault motive and wanted Jacob to pay for what he had done to Stephanie. Stephanie led William to believe she wanted Jacob dead because she wanted to drink his blood. He also told police Joel had much more involvement than he let on. Joel helped beat Jacob and helped cut his throat. He also confirmed the location of where the body was. Stephanie and Tammy were brought in behind the men and questioned as well. Tammy had been interviewed three times but changed her tune when she was brought in this time. She explained she was present in the home during the death of Jacob, and she assisted in cleaning the blood spatter from the walls and the floor. She provided gloves and bleach for her and Stephanie. Stephanie, who also was interviewed a handful of times prior, finally told police she was in the house during the attack, claiming she was babysitting at the time. She told them she heard his cries for help, but neglected to aid him in any way. Stephanie also saw Jacob's body being removed from the home and stated there was a lot of blood. The largest puddle was in the kitchen, which Stephanie told investigators was cool looking. 
She also confirmed that her and her friends were part of a vampire cult, and that she didn't drink Jacob's blood despite rumors. She stated she used a steam cleaner to assist in cleaning up after the chaos. All five assailants were charged, each with varying degrees. Joel Millsap, who was 26 at the time, received the charge of second-degree murder and was sentenced to 25 years. He won't be released until 2035. William Chase, who was 17, received the same terms and conditions as Millsap, and he also won't be released until 2035. Tammy Morris, who was 30, was charged with accessory after the fact to second-degree murder, but she received a much lighter punishment. The judge had a soft spot for Tammy since she had children, and he gave her probation for three years. James Gay, he was 20. He was charged with aggravated battery with intent to harm. He was sentenced to 12 years and is expected to be released in 2025. And lastly, the ringleader of the vampire cult, Stephanie Pisty, who was 18, was charged with accessory after the fact to second degree murder. She was sentenced to 12 years in prison and she has a current release date of 2023. Jacob didn't deserve to die. I didn't even know he was going to die, but I honestly knew that they were gonna beat him up. And in my opinion, he deserved to get the beat out of him. So I know this one was kind of crazy, but I had to share it. And also, fun fact, I actually knew Stephanie Pisty. She and I rode the same bus together during high school, and she had always been a strange person. Granted, she never went around boasting she was a vampire werewolf, but you could just tell something was off about her. She always had like this crazy look in her eye, and she talked about the weirdest things. I know people can be eccentric, but she was like over the top. I don't know, it just never sat right with me. I still remember hearing this on the news when it happened, and it totally didn't take me by surprise. But I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this, please consider giving it a thumbs up to let YouTube know the content is entertaining enough to keep you informed. And if you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing because we would love to have you here. Thank you for all your support and kind words. I really do appreciate all the interaction, feedback, and suggestions. My viewers are the best viewers. But that's it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, friends.